Welcome back to World History 2. I hope you're doing well today. We finished up our look at the Second World War last time, and today we're going to be looking at a PowerPoint lecture on the post-World War II crime trials. Stay tuned for the PowerPoint. Okay, class, where we left off last time, the uh, Germans uh, had uh, lost the war, the Japanese had lost the war, and we now move into uh, the war crimes trials. Uh, the only portion that we're going to cover uh, for this course during the war crimes is going to be the uh, the Nazi uh, war crimes. So as you see there on the screen, that's a blow up of a picture of uh, some of the Nazis in the during the trial. On the bottom left is Hermann Goering. He was uh, the chief of the Luftwaffe. He was basically second in command after Hitler. And uh, the guy next to him is is Rudolf Hess, who's kind of leaning forward on that on that uh, little half wall. Uh, Rudolf Hess, if you remember him, he was uh, in prison with Hitler uh, as Hitler uh, wrote Mein Kampf. So just two uh, Nazi criminals there. Um, so the place that this took, that these uh, trials took place at was uh, Nuremberg, Germany. If you remember that, that was the big... Um, the party rally, the big party rallies, where if you were a Nazi, that's uh, that's the place you wanted to be. Um, that uh, that's the same location. So after the war, those accused of war crimes, um, such as the Holocaust or executions or slave labor or um, other other activities that we consider war crimes, uh, they were brought to trial. And uh, the site that was chosen was Nuremberg, Germany. Um, it had a great meaning. Okay, it's important to know that that it, it was it wasn't just arbitrarily chosen that Nuremberg would be the place for the trials. Uh, it was uh, specifically chosen because it had great meaning. This was the site of the massive Nazi Party rallies to show Nazi greatness. And now you see all the Nazis who at one time were in that city um, proclaiming their greatness. Now they're brought to justice, and they will answer for the crimes that they committed. Uh, the judges of the Nuremberg War Crimes Trials uh, were judges from the United States, Great Britain, France, and the Soviet Union, basically the winning powers, the allies. They uh, won the war, and so they're the ones that are going to put the, the Nazis on trial. There were 22 major Nazi figures put on trial at the Nuremberg War Trials. Um, there were some other... People put on trial also who were not major Nazi figures. Um, some of these names that we're going to go through, you might not have heard of some of them. There, these people that were put on trial were Nazi officials, uh, Holocaust perpetrators, uh, business executives that used slave labor. You might not even think about that, but some of the people put on trial were business executives because their factories used uh, people from concentration camps. Uh, almost all admitted to crimes because the, the evidence was just overwhelming. So they, they admitted to the crimes they committed, but their main defense was, I was just following orders. They continued to say, I was just following orders. Well, what happens is you can only say that if, uh, if you're of a lower, uh, lower person, like if you're lower on the totem pole, uh, you can say, well, I was just following my boss's orders. Still doesn't make it right. Still doesn't excuse you, but... You could say that, I guess, if you're low on the totem pole. Uh, these guys were all on the top of the totem pole. These guys were in charge of the entire uh, ministries. They were in, char in, in charge of entire sections of the military. Um, the only one they could go even higher to was uh, Adolf Hitler. So, um, you know, really, they, they can't use that reasoning. I was just following orders. Uh, some people were missing at the Nuremberg War Crimes Childs for... Uh, Obvious reasons, Adolf Hitler, der Fuhrer, he uh, committed suicide, so he's not there. Uh, Joseph Goebbels, who was Minister of Propaganda, he was another one that committed suicide. He and his wife Magda poisoned their children. They all died, and then, and then Magda and Joseph Goebbels killed themselves. Um, Heinrich Himmler, Reichsführer SS, he was... Uh, basically, he was the one basically in charge of. He was in charge of the SS, and the SS was in charge of the concentration camps. Uh, he committed suicide after being captured by the U.S. Army um, when the war was winding down, and it was inevitable that the Germans were going to be uh, beaten. Heinrich Himmler uh, he fled, and he went. Uh, 
he went to the west to try to run into the American lines and surrender to the Americans instead of to the Russians. And so he um, put on a, uh, a regular soldier's uniform, and I think he had an eye patch. He put an eye patch on. He tried to disguise himself. That's what I'm trying to say. He tried to disguise himself. Well, it turns out that he was found out who he was, and when uh, it was found out who he was, um, he uh, killed himself with a cyanide capsule. I have a picture coming up about that. Um, there were some others that escaped to other countries, so these ones were not put on trial uh, right then and there. Uh, Joseph Mengele, who was a Nazi SS doctor, and he's the one that was famous for doing the experiments on the Jews. Uh, he, uh, he escaped to uh, Argentina, and he died in the 1970s, I think maybe 1972, he died. Uh, Adolf Eichmann, he was a pretty... A high up Nazi official. Basically, you had uh, Heinrich Himmler uh, in the SS, and then under him was Reinhard Heydrich. Now, Heydrich was killed during the war. He was assassinated during the war, and Heydrich was given the job to create the concentration camp system that included the death camps, and that took place at the Wannsee Conference. And uh, when Reinhard Heydrich was assassinated, his deputy, Adolf Eichmann, stepped into his place and so Adolf Eichmann became like right underneath of Himmler so it basically went Hitler and then Himmler in charge of the SS and then Eichmann was in charge of the concentration camps and the death camps uh, so he was deputy of Himmler he escaped and he was captured in Argentina uh, later on and put on trial actually put on trial in Israel and he was executed in 1962 uh, there's a picture of Heinrich Himmler. So he was in charge of the SS. Um, his official title is Reichsführer SS. And uh, there he is dead on the floor. He's, that's in captivity. He bit on a cyanide capsule and killed himself. Okay, so here's some of the figures that we are talking about, the Nazi figures. Hermann Goering, Hitler's second-in-command. He was sentenced to death. Rudolf Hess, deputy leader of the Nazi party. Uh, he got life in prison. Uh Joachim von Ribbentrop, the foreign minister, remember him? He was that the Ribbentrop, the Molotov-Ribbentrop uh, treaty um, that divided Poland when Germany invaded Poland from the west and Russia invaded Poland from the east, and they stopped it halfway through and they divided Poland. That was the Molotov-Ribbentrop uh, treaty. Uh, he was sentenced to death. Uh, Wilhelm Keitel was sentenced to death. He was the head of the armed forces. Uh, Wilhelm Frick. Uh, was the Minister of the Interior, sentenced to death. Ernst Kaltenbrunner, uh, he was sentenced to death. He was head of security, so he, he would kind of like be in charge of the, the police. See, what happened was in Germany, um, when the Germans were moving east and conquering these lands in the east, they needed people to, they needed police, basically, to police up after the army went through. So the army's moving through and moving into Russia farther and farther. Well, what happens to all the lands that are being conquered? So Germany sent regular police officers into, um, into these lands to basically police the lands. Well, they were broken into uh, groups called Einsatzgruppen, which the Einsatzgruppen were basically uh, killing squads, and they went through and they would go into towns and take the Jews and shoot them, and and they would take uh, gypsies and and you know, homosexuals and all. They would take them to shoot them or concentration camps, wherever they would put the people uh, that they designated from that town. Maybe they could be used for slave labor. Well, I, uh, Ernst Kaltenbrunner would have been in charge of of like police that would be doing that. So he was sentenced to death. Uh, Hans Frank. Uh, he was governor of occupied Poland, and that's where most of that's where the um, the death camps were was in the occupied portion of Poland. It's called um, the General Government of Poland was what it was called. Hans Frank was in charge of that, and that's where the death camps were. So um, he was sentenced to death. Konstantin von Neurath was governor of Bohemia Morovia. That was uh, part of Czechoslovakia. He got 10 to 20 years in prison. Eric Rader was the head of the Navy. Uh, that's called the Kriegsmarine. Uh, he uh, got life. Uh, Carl Donitz, now I had to make that smaller so I could fit it all in there. Carl Donitz, he was, um, uh, he's kind of an important guy. He was Rader's successor, so he was, he was in the Navy also. Carl Donitz was, and he became the head of uh, the Kriegsmarine. 
And when Hitler killed himself, Donitz became the leader of Nazi Germany until the surrender. So Donitz was actually der Fuhrer, uh, so kind of an important guy. Uh, Alfred Jodl uh, was Armed Forces Operations Chief, chief since the death. Alfred Rosenberg was Minister of the Occupied Areas. He was um, sentenced to death. Obviously, if this is occupied areas, uh, they're going to be cleaning out the Jews and killing them. Uh, Boulder von Schirach, um, he, he was head of the Hitler Youth. He was head of Hitler Youth for many years. Yeah, he got 10 to 20 years in prison. Uh, Julius Streicher, was, uh, he was a, a hardcore Nazi. I mean, this guy was like serious, uh, serious Nazi. Um, he, uh, he, was the publish, he was a publisher, and he published a lot of the Nazi and... Uh, uh, anti-Semitic propaganda. Uh, he was sentenced to death. Uh, Fritz Sauckel, uh, head of the forced labor allocation. So you can just imagine that if you're in charge of the forced labor and where the laborers went. Uh, he got death. Albert Speer, uh, minister of armaments and Hitler's architect. Uh, so when Germany got on the war footing and they had to build up their armed forces, Albert Speer was in charge of building up the army and the navy and the um, the air for the Luftwaffe, and you know the armaments, making sure they had enough uh, ammunition and bombs and all that, uh, airplanes, all that. So um, he was also Hitler's architect. He was an architect by trade, and so all the mass building projects that uh, Hitler undertook with the building. Uh, rebuilding of uh, parts of Germany, excuse me, of uh, Berlin uh, with the new Reichstag building, the Chancellery building, just massive stone uh, buildings. And also all of the buildings for the Olympics uh, fell under Albert Speer. Uh, Arthur Seiss Inquart, uh, he was commissioner of Occupied Netherlands. He got death. Martin Bormann, um, this is interesting, he was Hitler's adjunct. Uh, he... Um, was sentenced to death, but he was tried in absentee, so he wasn't there at the trial. Um, his bones were found in Berlin in 1972, and they believed to have been killed. He was believed to have been killed in Berlin while fighting in May of 1945. So the last they saw of him was uh, he went off, and there's different stories. Some said he went off to fight the Russians. Others said he went off to try to flee and run away. Um, I think it was the, the latter that he tried to flee and run away, but he was killed. And they found his bones. This obviously is not a complete list. There were a good number of the uh, business executives that they got either acquitted or uh, minimum time in jail. Okay, but these are the big names and the big uh, ministry departments and, and military departments that got punished. The death sentences were carried out on October 16, 1946. They were all hanged, cremated, and ashes dumped in the Iser River. Um, except two, uh, Hermann Goring committed suicide while in custody. Uh, he had a little bit of help. Someone, a guard, had snuck in a cyanide capsule and gave it to him, and he bit down on that and killed himself. And uh, Martin Bormann, uh, as I had mentioned, he was already dead. So all the rest of them were um, hanged and cremated and ashes dumped. Uh, those in prison spent their prison sentences in Spandau Prison. That's a very famous prison in Berlin, Spandau Prison. A lot of um, Nazi war criminals who were sentenced just to prison sentences, they all went to Spandau. Many other trials, executions, and prison sentences of other Nazi officials, prison and concentration camp commandants, guards, police, etc., all throughout Germany, they had trials for war crimes, and it went all the way down to like guards. Certain guards at Auschwitz were, you know, who were known for executions and brutally terrorizing people and torturing people. Uh, they were sentenced to death and they were hanged. Uh, so, don't just think that these are the only ones that these these names I just read read off. All these big guys. Don't just think that they're the only ones that were executed. There were a lot of people executed for their crimes. In Germany. Uh, here's Hermann Goring on the left, and there he is on the right uh, after killing himself. This is during the, the trial. Uh, here's Wilhelm Frick uh, after being removed from the scaffold, laying there on the box. Uh, so you can see the noose is still around his neck. Here's Ribbentrop. Ribbentrop on the left. So, uh, again, the, the Molotov Ribbentrop Treaty. Um, you know, there's. Uh, 
There he is on the left, and there he goes on the right. Okay, that's it for this PowerPoint. See you in a second. Okay, class, that's it for today. Next time we'll be looking at the Cold War Part 1. I'll see you then.